Hey beauty babes, welcome to my channel. I'm Maria, aka Agape Love Girl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to do a little uh, kind of new foundation routine that I've been doing, um, or I don't, I don't really want to call it a foundation routine, but it's just a new base routine that I've been doing and really liking. I talked a little bit about this in my uh, Make a Basket Shop My Stash video um, this for this month, how I've kind of been doing this really minimal, um, almost, I mean still using a little bit of powder, but almost no powder uh, makeup, base makeup routine um, that I've been really, really loving. And I feel like, I know, who am I? Who is she? She's not gonna be packing on the powders. Like, who is this woman? Um, it's very, very different for me. It's something that I never thought I would enjoy because I love powders so much. But the products I've been using lately I've really been enjoying them and don't feel like they need the powder um, and so anyways I just figured I would share the routine with you and how I've been applying products I've been using a lot of like duo fiber brushes duo fiber brushes have been my jam for like the last couple of months but especially this last month February with the way I have switched things up and the way I've been doing things and also I was testing out some cream products and stuff like that so that kind of pulled me into this whole like no powder or minimal powder look so Anyways, I just thought that might be interesting to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with primer. I'm going to be using this uh, 24 karat elixir serum primer from the brand She Knows. And it's like this little gold flake serum -y primer. It says it's best for uh, dry to very dry uh, skin and it has anti-aging properties to it. I've been using this. I, um, last month I used it, but I decided to keep my makeup basket this month so I could really kind of like do a little wear test with it because I never really did that last month. I've been really liking to use dual fiber brushes to um, apply my primer as well, so I thought I might demonstrate that for you. <laughs> but with this one specifically, I feel like it works just a little bit better with my my fingers. But the last couple of months, I was actually using um, a dual fiber brush, just like this one, to apply my my primers, and I feel like that works so so great. Love it so much. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and do my brows next. That way it gives the primer some time to fully set and absorb into my skin before I go in with my foundation. So for my brows, I'm going to be using the Precisely My Brow from Benefit Cosmetics. And I may just kind of speed through this. I'm not sure yet. I don't know if I'm very good at doing my brows and talking at the same time. All right, now I know this is a precise brow pencil and you really, there's really no reason you should make a mess with it when you do your brows like the mess I'm making, but I find that because I do have like that primer on first or you know anytime I have anything slick, like even moisturizer or skin prep or whatever, and I do my brows and then I go to like kind of use a spoolie to kind of brush the product through, I always end up making a little bit of a mess around my brows. I'm sure I could be more precise and more careful, but I just, whatever. Um, so whenever I do that, um, I just take a concealer to clean up around my brows. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, and hopefully that's not bothersome to some, some of you who are like, why are your brows so messy? There's no need to have to do this cleanup. It's so silly, but you know what it is? <laughs> it is what it is. And I kind of like doing it because I feel like I like that it kind of cleans up my, around my brows and adds that, that uh, bit of coverage. That way when I go to put my foundation on, I don't have to get super close to my brows and you know what I mean? It like, it just works out all the way around. So I usually just take the uh, um, Helly Girl Pro Concealer and I take a little bit and squeeze some out in the back of my hand so I don't have too much, but then I could also kind of dip back into that. So that's what I was doing right there. And then I just love this concealer so much, especially for this, and just kind of outline my brows like so. This is also nice because then I can bring that concealer down um, to onto my eyelids and it helps to kind of cancel out the darkness there and prep them for... For eyeshadows I will still use a, an eyeshadow primer but I, I tend to feel like lately shadows just look so much better when I have a little bit of a concealer in conjunction with an eyeshadow primer especially if it's an um, eyeshadow primer that uh, doesn't add any coverage you know what I mean there are some good eyeshadow primers that also add some coverage to cancel out these dark the darkness you know dark circles if you have them um, but some of them just, you know, are just a clear or translucent, transparent um, primer. So I feel like I need a little bit of that. So you can see how it kind of cleans that up. Then I could also do it right here, add a little bit of coverage right here between my brows. Because then after I do this cleanup, I do like to go back in with the um, the small, the precise brow pencil and add little, little bit of hair-like strokes in the front of my brows. 
to bring back a <laughs> quote unquote more natural look. I know that's not really super natural, but you know what? It's what I like. All right, now with my brows done, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my foundation. And what I've been loving lately is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. Now, I mentioned this briefly in my makeup basket this month that I have two of them in here because I originally had the shade Warm Beige, which ended up not being a match for me. Uh, it was a little bit too cool tone, even though the name suggests it would be a warm tone. I don't really get that. I still don't get that. I feel like I mention that every time I talk about this, and it's probably getting redundant and annoying by now but I just still like why how why don't get it. anyways too cool tone it turns pink on me so I purchased the shade golden beige um it, to see if that would be a better match for me and uh it ended up being a little too too like almost orangey a little too warm for me so I wasn't loving it uh, when I was wearing it on its own and then uh, one day I decided just to see if what if I just mix the two together and see if maybe they might balance each other out and be a nice match for me and I felt like they really, them to, these two together create a really great match for my skin tone. So it makes me wonder like, am I more of a neutral skin tone? I've always thought I was more of a warm skin tone, like or olive -y, like skin tone, but maybe I'm more neutral. I don't know. I don't know if even these two cr together makes neutral, but either way, I, I'm rambling. Anyway, so I'm going to take a, one dropper because they are little droppers. Um, one dropper of each uh, of, of these shades, mix them in my palm, and then use a duo fiber brush to apply them. So in case you're curious about the brush I'm using, this is the Beauty Junkies Duo Fiber Large Stippling Brush. Pretty much all the, the um, duo fiber brushes I'm using are from Beauty Junkies. I do have a discount code with them. I think it's Agape Love, and I think it saves you like 20% off. I'm gonna take that, so I've got the mixture in the palm of my hands with this duo fiber brush. And I'm gonna, I might have picked up a little bit too much. I'm just gonna start by, usually with a stippling brush you wanna like stipple, but I just kind of start by sweeping this on. Now this is a very thin fluid foundation, but it has a lot of pigment and coverage. So a little bit goes a long way, which is why I was like, oh no, I picked up a little bit too much. So <laughs> I feel like I'm not gonna demonstrate this as well as I normally would. Bring it up here. So with some foundations in a stippling brush, you don't necessarily need to go over it with um, a beauty sponge or makeup sponge or anything like that, but I have been really enjoying using a duo fiber brush and then going over it with my um, with a makeup sponge. And so that's what I'm gonna do here, but I absolutely need to because I picked up way too much foundation. That was accidental. I feel like I wanted to come on here and demonstrate what I've been doing and then I go and mess it up. <laughs> So I like to just stipple it on, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, makeup sponge. This is also from the brand Beauty Junkies, just so I can kind of start blending that out. It's been a, a while since I have filmed, so I feel like I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> So this looks really, really nice. I love the way this looks. Definitely went in a little bit too heavy handed, but what's nice about this foundation is that it is really fluid and it is pigmented, but it doesn't like um, cake up, at least in my opinion. It's so thin and fluid. It's just so nice. It works out very easily. It does dry down fairly quickly, but I still feel like you saw, I put on all the foundation and then kind of started dapping it out with this um, sponge and now it's just such beautiful coverage. And I actually still have quite a bit left in my palm here, if you can tell. I just picked up a little bit too much in the droppers, I guess, this time. Uh, I don't know what is my deal today, but hopefully the rest of this video and demonstration will be a little bit better. <laughs> now, another great thing about that foundation specifically and why I feel like this has been working for me and why I've been enjoying this kind of routine lately is that that is a matte foundation. It dries down um, and almost, I feel like, has a bit of a dry down to almost a powder finish. Um, so it dries down matte where there's no dewiness, there's, you don't feel it on your skin, there's no residue, you know what I mean? But it doesn't dry down matte to where it's like drying out your skin or your skin feels like it needs to be hydrated. Now I am someone who does have dry skin, um, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of picky about matte foundations. I don't really love dewy foundations either. I like more so 
it's like natural finish foundations and i feel like for a matte foundation this is a little bit more of a natural finish but it is more so matte but the good thing about that is that it doesn't need to be set it doesn't need the powder and that's why it kind of really works for what i've been doing lately and why it looks so so nice and so i'm going to follow that up with the catrice a liquid glamouflage concealer i'm using the shade 020 light beige it is a pretty light <laughs> Um, but I think right now it's a decent match for me. It's not too bad. This is a really, really full coverage. You really don't need too much. And I like to do one side at a time because this one also does dry down fairly quickly as well. I don't think it's like, I think you could do both eyes and it would be fine. Um, but just to be safe, I usually like to just, when it's a more of a drier or quick drying formula of any type of product, I usually just like to do one side at a time. And so I just tap that out really nicely with my makeup sponge. And I like to bring it into the crease of my nose. I typically like to bring it down here to my chin too, because that's where I feel like I need the need, quote unquote, um, more coverage. So I always have those chin little chin pimples going on. So you can see the lightness and brightness that that adds. And also, I don't know if I said, but this uh, concealer uh, does, I don't feel like it needs to be set either. I will go ahead and set this a little bit later, but it is a more dry formula, so I don't feel like this uh, really needs to be set. And I don't feel like it creases or gets stuck in any uh, fine lines. But I personally just like a little bit more uh, coverage or um, I like a little bit of more brightening to my under eyes. So that's what I'm going to do when I add some powder. That's really going to be the only place I add powder in my routine today. All right, now is when I'm going to go ahead and go in with some powders just to lightly set under my eyes. Now I'm going to be using two powders and this is absolutely not necessary. If you were to like follow this routine, I would just say use whatever powder you find is your favorite and you might not even need to use powder, but if you feel like there's certain places you just feel like you need to set, um, then just lightly do this. Um, I don't even know if I'm doing this for someone to really follow. I'm just showing you guys what I've been doing, what I've been enjoying lately. So I don't really know if I'm trying to make this some kind of tutorial or something to follow or not. You know, everything works very differently for, you know, different people. So anyway, that being said, I'm going to take this kind of little small dome brush because I'm going to be setting my uh, under my eyes. And like I said, I'm going to be using two powders, which is absolutely unnecessary, but I've just found that I really love this combo lately, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using the Urban Decay uh, The Fix, which is actually technically a powder foundation, but it's such a lightweight powder. I just really, really like it. I've got the shade 40WY, and as you can see, it's a pretty light shade. And then I'm also going to mix that with a little bit of this Urban Decay The Illuminizer, uh, which is a translucent setting powder, but it has a little bit of luminosity to it. Uh, this is just a powder I absolutely love for setting under my eyes. But lately, since I have been doing less powders um, and have less powders to kind of mix with this, I feel like it's just a little bit too luminizing um, for for this look with the rest of my face so matte. Um, so that's why I like to mix it with a little bit of this because I feel like that helps balance it out. I still get a little bit of luminosity and brightness under my eyes, but it's not overpowering. So I just take a little, little bit of both of them and then just start dabbing that under my eyes and I like to do this I'm making this little face because what when you're doing powders you want to kind of sweep back so you're kind of getting into those fine lines where you may get some creasing like I said I don't really get creasing with this um so I got a little scratch there itch there with this concealer and this foundation but just in case there were going to be any I still like to kind of take it backwards this way and then down and then back so from the outer corner of the eye towards the inner corner of the eye down and then sweeping that powder back and as you can see it's not a huge difference it's a little bit more subtle but there is a difference as you can see it just adds a little bit more brightness and luminosity there under my eyes where i feel like i like the way that looks i feel like i quote unquote need it <laughs> i hate saying the word need because it's not a need but i just prefer that uh for under my eyes just a little bit more brightness where i feel like it still gets um just ugh, my dark circles just always tend to look a little bit more dull so I like doing this little little bit of powder to help and I'm kind of just noticing I guess out of habit I did bring that powder just whatever was left on the brush after placing most of it on my on my eyes I am bringing it down right here into my smile lines 
But anyways, that's pretty much it. That's the extent of the powders that I've been using for my face. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is set my face with a setting spray. Now, the reason why I like doing this is something I used to do actually uh, a long time ago, a couple years ago, and I got out of the habit of doing it. I don't know why, but I, I kind of gone back to doing it. I really like this idea of setting my face after doing the foundation, concealer, and powder, however much powder you do. I used to do a lot more powder, but regardless, still just setting it because it kind of, I feel like it seals those base products, just adds this layer of like a finishing seal layer that preps it and makes it a more of a smooth um, canvas for the next product you're going to put on top of it. So this is not necessary, but this is something that I just really like in, in my routine. In case you're curious, the uh, setting spray I'm using is the Revolution Pro Hydra Matte Fixing Spray. Now I feel like doing that additionally is another way that I have come to enjoy using less um, powders. And this also kind of really depends on what foundation or concealers you're using as well because sometimes um, when you're doing a no powder look, if you're just doing cream, cream products or liquid products um, and no powders or minimal powders, um, I just feel like sometimes they just move around too much or um, don't fully set down and that's a big reason why I've never been a fan of, of not using powders, not incorporating powders into a, my base routine um, because I just didn't like how that felt, I didn't like how that looked, I didn't like that it was so movable, everything on the face was so movable. Some people do like that and that's what works for some people. For me, I didn't like that and so I feel like having that layer of setting spray really helps to set everything in place so there is no moving. Now, additionally, like I said, the foundation and concealers you use is going to play a big factor in that. We're going to go ahead and move into um, contouring now and for that I'm going to use a cream product. Um, I'm going to be using the Pure Cosmetics Cameo Contour. This does have a like highlighter or foundation-y type shade that you can use as well and I've used that before in the past. I like it. I think it's nice if you need to do some cleanup but I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to be using the contour side and in the past when I've used this and I really like this cream contour. I find that it's very easy to blend out. Um, it moves around. It's not too firm and waxy um, and it's also not too sheer like it gives good pigmentation but it's very very creamy and moves very easily but in the past when I've used this as a cream contour I've just streaked it onto my face and then blended it out and when I first started using this last month I was doing that same thing and still using a duo fiber brush to blend it out but I just feel like it was just too heavy and then I would do so much more blend not heavy but like I it would when you streak it onto your face there's just so much product and so much of the blend out and I started working so hard to blend it out that I feel like then I would would lose a little bit of pigmentation because I was trying to blend so much of it out that I would just go in with the powder contour anyways. So anyways, the way I've been doing it lately is by grabbing a smaller duo fiber brush like this. This is the mini duo fiber stippling. Let me show it to you in comparison to the large one. So this is what they look like. This is one I use for my foundation um, and this is the smaller one. And so I just take it like this and just run this over this contour and like I said because this is so creamy and so pigmented just this little bit that's actually going to get a lot of product and I know this isn't new or revolutionary it's just that like I me I just finally started doing it this way and I'm like oh I love this I love the way it looks so this is going to be a lot but I'm going to go ahead and start by stippling it on so you can see like that's quite a bit of product and when you're doing it like this you can build up the product to put as much or as little as you need um and stippling it on helps so you can get the pigment where you want it but then you can also use this to blend and it's such a soft nice blend so I feel like you're not blending too much away and you're not putting too much on you can really place it where you want to and you get the pigmentation you know that you need that you don't have to fix later by over blending or by adding a concealer or by adding more powder to it I just think it looks so nice and it gives so much more of a natural look as well And so then you just kind of go back and forth. And this might seem like a slower process because I'm kind of talking you through it and I'm looking at the mat monitor and I really only have this small mirror to use. Usually if I'm doing it, I'm standing in front of a big mirror and I don't have to like go back and forth between holding this and putting it down and all that. I can just kind of hold the product and dip into it a little bit quicker. But anyways, it's a it's, it's quicker product process than what it might seem like right now. <laughs> so don't let that scare you away.
What's really great also about dual fiber brushes is that because they're dual fiber, that literally means there's two different types of fibers for the brushes. There's these longer ones, um, the white bristles, and then the shorter ones down here. Um, is that they give you such a feather a light application so you get much more of a natural kind of almost airbrushed or flawless finish I love using it on top of other products like you're saying I already have the foundation down and yes I did use the setting spray to help kind of set it so it didn't it wouldn't be disturbed but when you're using a duo fiber brush like it really helps so you're not disturbing the makeup underneath you can really gently apply makeup in such a feather light way that it's not going to disturb the makeup underneath and I just really appreciate that so much. <laughs> I've just been really on this kick with duo fiber brushes lately. I'm just like, these are the best. <laughs> but I feel like especially if you want a little bit more natural looking makeup, a little bit, like you still want to do all the things, but you don't want to have like cake face. Like duo fiber brushes are truly like the way to go. Okay, I think I built that up really nicely, but I was just going to say, I, I don't feel like I need to fix anything, but I, I would just want to mention that what's great also about duo fiber brushes, and I feel like this is like an ad for duo fiber brushes, but literally I've just been so in love with them lately. Um, anyways, uh, what's great that if you feel like you did go in a little bit too much and you want to fix it, you could always go back in with the duo fiber brush that had your foundation on it and just kind of run, the, I pretty much wiped all this off, <laughs> but um, you can just like run back over it very gently um, without adding any more um, foundation if you didn't wipe it um whatever she's left on the brush and kind of lightly like tap over and it can help fix any mistakes and things like that and i just i don't know been on such a kick with two fiber brushes um you guys all probably know by now like this is my my favorite it's so it's so old and it's so kind of beat up but i love it this is also from beauty junkies it's their pro duo fiber brush this is the one i always uh, would use when i'm like dusting off my excess powders or like blending anything in or doing like a final blend on my face it's my favorite. I love it so, so much. But it can also be used for like adding bronzer if you want a little light touch of bronzer, um, adding blush and things like that. Like dual fire brushes are just fabulous. Okay, next up, now that I've got my uh, contour bronzer done, um, I am gonna go ahead and go into blush. And this is the product that's not my, like mainly in my makeup basket. I took it out this month because um, that other new blushes I needed to try. And sorry about the squeaking, the squeaking of this chair. It's so noisy. <laughs> um, but I, I knew I wanted to use it for this video because I wanted to demonstrate in action because I am someone like I've said before I'm not super big into cream products like of a hair somewhere yes I did um, <laughs> and I was sent um, several new products from CoverGirl a lot of them were cream products so cream um, highlight which I'm gonna be using today the cream blush and then a new foundation and I was like really skeptical I was thinking I wasn't gonna like these because I'm not big into cream products I just don't feel like I they I don't know how to work them very well and I don't prefer them they're more of a pain in the butt so I just don't want to <laughs> deal with them, but I want to give these a fair shot. And I tried several different ways of applying this blush um, with my finger using a uh, makeup sponge and then using um, regular brushes. And then I decided to use it, of course, with a duo fiber brush. So I have another one of these smaller ones. This one's the one I have de dedicated for the blush. This is my um, bronzer one. So you can see a little bit of pinky one, a brown one here. <laughs> um, and uh, I've also tried like applying just a dot to the face first and trying to blend it out um, with various methods and th things like that and I just feel like none of those ways worked super great so I feel like this is the best way and again this is probably not super new or revolutionary to anybody this is probably like the smartest way you could do anything <laughs> um, but anyways I just figured I'd share this is how I got it to really work um, and then look the best and how I would recommend using cream products so this is the uh, clean fresh cream blush from CoverGirl. Uh, it's the shade 370 Butterflies. And this, these are pretty pigmented. They last really well. They're really beautiful. This has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but I don't feel like once it's applied on the cheek, it's like super shimmery. But anyways, I will squeeze a little bit on the, the you know, backside of my hand like this. Uh, a good uh, dollop of it. Then take my duo fiber brush and dip it in there. And it's going to seem like a lot of product, but what I like to do is just dip it all around it almost to where like a lot of the product is blended already onto and off my hand so that way it's not too much and I'm not going to go in too heavy handed onto my cheek so there's still got a bit of product on here and I just kind of slight start to lightly stipple that blush on and I feel if I feel like I need to add a little bit more from here I will um, or just squeeze out a little bit more I'm not really worried about wasting the product it might seem wasteful a little bit but that's as 
for a cream blush that's a that's a big tube that's gonna last a long time so you just this is I feel like is the best way because you could just slowly start building it up and it seems like very very light but believe me I've done it where I put on way too much I'm like oh that's a mistake you want to kind of build it up very very lightly so you don't end up looking too clown like and some people want to have more of a, a lot of blush. Sometimes I go pretty ham with blush. But I feel like with a cream blush, you want to be a, a lot more cautious and careful. And so you can see there's not a lot of shimmer. There is a, a, a light wash of color. It's very, very subtle because I didn't want to go too much. So now I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more, like a tiny little bit. And again, just kind of do the same thing where I'm dipping my brush in but tapping a lot of that product off. And then I'll lightly go in, start stippling and then blending. And see, look at that color. It's beautiful. It's soft, it's subtle, it looks very natural, light, and lovely. So I'm gonna do the other side and just kind of do the same thing. And I really like this method too, using this brush and kind of just dipping it off, you know, on my hand first. Because I feel like, you know, like if I were just to go in, say, with some of the product squeeze on here and done this, this is what it would look like on my cheek. So I like being able to, like, tap it off onto my hand first and then apply it. And I like it with the stippling brush, too, a lot better because when I was using my finger or um, a sponge, I felt like a sponge kind of, like, just, it almost, like, picks it up and puts it down and moves it. It almost looks like it's disturbing the makeup that's underneath you know, of the blush, the foundation and stuff like that. I just felt like I wasn't loving the way that was looking as much as like this dual fiber application. I just feel like you have more control when you do it this way and it's not picking things up and laying them down like, you know what I mean? It's just, this is truly blending it into the skin. And I don't know, it just looks so nice and such so much more natural and just pretty and just like soft. I don't know, I've just really, I've been into it clearly. So that's, that's it for the blush. I think it makes it super easy, super, I don't know, beautiful. I really like it. It makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy when things like go into place and look really well on the face. Like I, I do not like the look of anything looking too cakey. Now I'm not someone who's like opposed to unnatural makeup because, you know, I keep saying the word natural a lot in this video, but I feel like a lot of what I wear is, is not natural. Believe me, I can go pretty ham with bronzer and blush and things like that, but I've been so happy with this new routine and how it looks just more natural than how I typically do my makeup and I just think it looks so soft and pretty and I think a lot of people will appreciate uh, this this type of routine if you start doing it so anyways next up I'm gonna go ahead and move on to a highlight and for that I'm also gonna use another covergirl product this is their clean fresh cooling glow stick this is the shade 400 so guilty it's a beautiful kind of like um champagne gold highlighter it's really really beautiful and again same thing with this one as with the blush i tried a, a few uh different ways of applying it i use a sponge and again i didn't really like the sponge because i feel like it just kind of picks the product up and places it down and kind of picks up product underneath like that's on your skin already and moves that i didn't like that i tried just swiping it on the cheek and that was okay but i don't prefer that honestly i feel like the best way to apply this is with um nab duo fiber brush <laughs> some of you guys might have thought i was gonna say that but is with your fingers surprisingly um i don't typically like doing that but this one just works the really i think the best with the finger so I'll take a little bit onto uh, my finger. One thing that's really great about this cream highlighter specifically is that it is so um, very, very creamy and like the, just the barely the warmth of your finger really helps to kind of emulsify it. Is that the right word? Like really melt into your hand with just the warmth of your finger running it like this. And it's really easy to use, but it doesn't stay like tacky or sticky or dewy on your skin once you apply it. It will dry down really, really nicely, so I really appreciate that. Now, if you're too worried to go in uh, straight away with this much product on your finger, you can tap a little bit off on your hand, but honestly, I feel like this blends out so nicely that you don't really have to worry about going in with too much. I would just say do light taps with your fingers. You can disperse and spread that product um, really evenly and well, and just start with very soft, uh, light taps. 
and then you can slowly start building up and you can see the, the, the shine that this gives. I feel like this gives a really gorgeous glow. Um, it can be blingy, but it's also still very subtle and natural. It, it truly gives like, and I feel like people say this a lot and you hear it a lot, but that lit from within glow. I feel like this is a product that truly offers that because it looks very soft and natural, but like when it catches the light, it's pretty blingy. Like it's just really, really beautiful. So I just picked up a little bit more and I'm just gonna lightly start building that up a little bit more so I get a little bit more glow because I like a good glow. Now it does say it's a cooling um, product. I don't know if I noticed that, I don't know. Okay, look how pretty that is. And again, it's like a pretty glow, but it looks natural. Like, does it not look natural to you guys? Like, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, so a little bit, I'm gonna take that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go in on the other side. And yeah, as you can see, I did take a little bit more time with this just because I'm trying to like slowly build it up and not just go in with a bunch. So this is one thing that may take a little bit more time than the others but I think it's important because you don't want to go in too crazy with it. Or maybe you do. I mean, it's really up to your preference. I just like to slowly build it up to see, you know, what, um, what I want, how I want it to look, you know what I mean? Instead of just going crazy right away. All right, and that's, that's pretty much it. I usually do one final spray with a setting spray, just as a final seal, again, with the uh, Revolution Pro setting spray, and that's gonna be it for my face. All right, and this is my uh, new base routine. I have been just loving it so much lately. Um, I never thought that I would be someone who wasn't like packing on the powders. Like it's, I, I seriously I feel like this, like who is she? Who am I? Uh, I almost feel like this is like new year, new me, but I hate that saying. I think it's stupid. <laughs> no offense to those who use it, but like seriously, maybe this is new year, new me. I don't know, but I've been loving this. I love how natural it looks. I love that I still have the coverage that I want, um, that I still have the look of a nice uh, defined, like kind of naturally chiseled face like with the contour because I'm not going to give up contour. I have a light flush of blush, a beautiful glow, um, but my face doesn't feel sticky tacky um, or like it's going to move around or anything like that. Like I just am so happy with this new routine and I was just really excited to share with you guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it and possibly found it helpful. Um, and uh, like I said, you can probably, you know, achieve this routine with other products you might like or find more enjoyable. But these ones that I use today, I really have been enjoying and I really really like and really recommend and I feel like that kind of says a lot um, especially from someone like me who's very picky and typically loves you know a lot of powders and doesn't really care for cream face products so for me to really like these I feel like that says a lot so these are products that I would recommend do you feel like you need to run out and buy them no use what you have and what you you know like um, but I do really really like these products and I've really enjoyed it using them um, some of them are new some of them have been in my collection for a while so um, I'm glad to bring some of them back out and I've really been enjoying some of the new products that I've been trying it can be really easy to sit here and say like I like this product for this reason but to be able to show you in action what I've been doing and how I've been using um, them and how I've been able to make them work, especially products that typically I wouldn't think I would like. Um, so you guys can see how I've been making them work. Like I feel like that's is a lot better so I do really hope again that you guys enjoyed this video but with all that being said I just want to thank you so so much for watching if you did like this video and you are new here I would encourage you guys to stick around I will go ahead and put some videos on the screen here for you guys to check out and possibly uh, consider subscribing to my channel but with all that being said I just want to thank you once again so so much for watching and until next time much love and hugs to you bye beauty babes Mwah!